Welcome to the first in a series of tutorials on the camera tracker node for NUCAX. So this first tutorial is going to talk about tracking and solving, getting started with the camera tracker node. So I've got an example bit of footage here. It's got a fairly nice camera move, some interesting things going on, foreground movement, and we've got to track and solve past this big rock here. So the way the camera tracker works is it picks up some 2D points in your footage, tracks them over time. From the tracks it calculates a 3D fixed location in the world and the camera move that matches those 3D points down onto the movement in your footage. So the key point in using the camera tracker is to make sure it's picking up and tracking good 2D points. So the first thing you'll notice about this script is I've got a roto here. So this is a really rough garbage map to make sure I'm not going to track and solve off this guy who's moving. Any moving objects is going to give you bad 3D points in your camera solve. So it's pretty dirty mat, but it'll do the job. Just make sure we exclude that region from the tracking. Okay, so let's bring up the camera tracker. I need to make sure I'm going to mask out that mat. So I'm going to set the mask to source alpha. So these three steps to using the camera tracker. First of all, you've got to track the footage. Then you solve the camera. Then you create a scene to work with in Nuke. I'm going to go through each of those steps. So before you track your features, you need to set up your tracking parameters. So the trick here is to switch on the preview and just make sure you're going to pick up good points for your solve. So these need to be the fixed points in the world that are going to be good for tracking. So the main parameters to deal with here are firstly the number of tracks. If you think you're going to get a lot of bad tracks out of the footage, maybe it's a fast, maybe there's a lot of motion blur, maybe there's a lot of foreground movement, you might want to pump this up, maybe 250 points. Because the aim to, is to get around 100 good auto tracks for the solve. 150 is the default, gives it a little bit of leeway to lose some. So as you step through, you're going to want to set the threshold to make sure you're picking up good things. So you can see on this frame, we've got quite a few points in the sky that it's going to want to try and track. Now, sky points are bad. They're a long, long way away. You're not going to get any decent 3D locations to solve the camera. So you're going to want to change the threshold here just to remove those. So as I step through, problem is straight away, you can see it's not picking up the rock anymore. It's a little bit too blurry to pick up any points. Now, that's actually really bad. Because what I want to do is to be able to track and solve past this rock and back again. And if there's nothing to solve off the rock, there's nothing to lock the camera down. So I'm actually going to bring that back down to make sure we've always got good points to track through the sequence. And we're going to have to deal with these sky points later on. Okay, let's just make that a nice round number. You can also play around the separation. If you, if you find points cluster in one place, you're going to want to force those apart. The aim is to get some good fixed points across the whole image at all the different frames in the, se in the sequence, all the different sections of the shot. So let's go with that. looks pretty good. These more in-depth parameters here are to do with shots that are difficult to track. You might want to increase the smoothness if you've got a lot of jitter, track consistency if tracks aren't consistent in the shots. Maybe if you're losing a lot of tracks, you might want to reduce the threshold a bit. Okay, so let's go with that and track. So what it does is it picks up 150 points, tracks it over time. Every time it loses a track, it tries and bumps up to 150 again. It's going to take a few minutes on my MacBook, so let's skip forward. Okay, so once it's tracked, you want to go through and review the tracks. Make sure they're all locked down on fixed points. So we were worried about the sky before. You can see some points up here on long, thin structures. They're going to not be locked down well. It's not too many sky points, but you can see a lot of little spurious ones here. So the first thing you can do is you can actually manually go and select those and delete them. And you can step through the timeline, picking these things up and deleting them. There's a few bad ones there. The other thing you can do is go into the Refine tab and look at the tracking information. So let's look, have a look at the minimum and average track length. So you can see there are a few tracks here that are down low, some short spurious tracks. So what we can do is just lift this a little bit. 
let's just keep the nice long ones in. Check they've got some nice tracks over the sequence. We're not losing whole frames. Okay, let's just go delete those straight away. Okay, so the next step is to solve the camera. So let's look at the solver tab and set up for the solve. We have a constant focal length. We don't know the film back or focal length for this shot. You can go and set the motion that you expect. It's just a free camera. It's not nodal or linear or planar. At the moment, we're not going to set any smoothness. And these parameters are here are really to do with dealing with bad when the solve goes wrong. Okay, so let's just go in and solve. So what this does is it steps through the timeline and it calculates a set of what's called keyframes. So for this sequence it might come up with 5, 6, 7, 10 keyframes that define the motion of the camera. It then solves those to lock down the camera and fills in the rest of the frames. Okay, so we've got a solve now. We've got a slightly different colour scheme for the tracks. So green means it calculated a 3D point, looks good. If you look at the overlay, you can see you've got a nice error, it's less than the pixel. The red points are the points it thinks are bad. So it's got a large error on that point. Let's, so you can actually go in, let's center on that track and see what's going on. By centering on the track and playing forwards and backwards, you can see how well it sticks to the footage. Alternatively, you can select a number of tracks and center on them all to see how a region sticks. Okay. And the amber tracks, these are the tracks where it couldn't calculate a 3D point. It was ambiguous. So it looks like we've got a reasonable set of tracks across the sequence. What you can do now is go into this Refine tab and look at the errors for the tracks. So these are the pixel errors, the error between the 3D point and the 2D track. So with 6.2 you get tooltips tool on these curves now, which is quite useful. But there's two error curves we're most interested in, the track error and the maximum error per frame. What you can see is there's some tracks here with quite large errors in there. So let's just bring that down to something reasonable. Let's just reduce the maximum error we're allowing on our tracks. Okay, so now we've set those thresholds. The color scheme in green is just showing everything that's below our thresholds on the error and above the minimum length on the track length. So we need to make sure we've got some nice green tracks that are taking us through the sequence. So that looks good. So we can hit recalculate solve now. It'll just calculate the solve based on those green tracks only. We want to check that it's still going to be able to solve OK. So again, check that we've got green tracks taking us through the whole sequence. That seems good. Our reprojection error now is looking reasonable. So I'm going to go and delete everything that's not useful here. Delete all those points where it couldn't calculate 3D points. And delete the ones that we've rejected, all those tracks in red. So we've just got the good tracks for the sequence. So this helps with the cleanup. I didn't have to go and manually delete all those sky points now. So let's just resolve from scratch, just using those good tracks. And look at the reprojection error, 1.7 pixels. Okay, so the solve looks good. If the solve was bad, I would have gone straight back to the solver tab. And my first thing I always do is drop down this keyframe separation. That just pulls in more of those keyframes to lock down the camera path. You can also, another good tip is to set the first frame it uses for the solve. So here it picked up frame 307. You can actually go in and set which frame it uses to begin with. So you can try using frames that have lots of nice parallax in them, lots of depth changes, 
or you can just try different frames in the sequence to see if it gives you a better result. Okay, so now that we've solved, I'm going to create a scene. So what that gives you is it gives you your camera and nuke to work with. It also gives you a camera tracker point cloud. So this just allows you to export with a right GA. And if I switch to 3D now, you can see I've got a point cloud and a camera. So I can see how well that fits. Just lock down on the camera. So if you want to start using this in 3D, the first thing you're going to want to do is set a ground plane so you can line up your world nicely. So I'm going to select a load of these ground points, just switch to 3D, make sure they really do lie on the ground. Yeah, they look good. And I'm going to set the ground plane to those selected points. You can skip along the timeline, picking up points as you go. Let's just pick up a few more. Switch to 3D, make sure they're on the ground. Yeah, they look good. Set to selected. A few more frames. Let's pick up some of these ones further along. They're still on the ground. Okay, so I've got a nice ground plane now. Nice little feature I like is I can go and set the orientation of the world. So if I pick up these two points, set the z-axis to line up with those, gets me nice and orientated so I can set things in 3D nicely. So let's just see how well it fits. So I'm going to create a little cube here. Scale it down a little bit, make sure it's sitting on top of the ground, and let's render it. How good is our track? Okay, now we've got our cube in the right place. We can play forwards and see how well it sticks. It's sticking quite nicely. There's no slippage there at all. And there we go. So that's the end of the first tutorial on the camera tracker. The main steps are you track your features, but before you track, just go through, have a preview, and set up your tracking parameters. If the tracking doesn't look good, you might want to come back in and tweak the thresholds and smoothness. Once you've got the tracks, you need to go through the timeline and review them. Check they look good. Maybe clear out the bad ones manually by selecting and deleting. After you're happy with your tracks, you hit solve. You may want to go in and set up your solver first. And once you've got your solve, go into the Refine tab, have a look at the errors, tweak some of the thresholds to make sure you've just got the good tracks, and you can delete all the bad auto tracks from the scene. Once you're happy with your track and solve, you create a scene.